So the rest of the lesson is just different types of problems that will lead to something where we have to use the method of common basis. So our first one says algebraically determine the intersection point of the two functions shown below. Recall that most systems of equations are solved by substitution. So we have that thing called elimination where, you know, x's and y's line up. This does not look like that will happen. We have two y equals, so we can set them equal to each other. We notice that 8 and 4 are both powers of 2, so I'm going to rewrite 8 as 2 cubed and 4 as 2 squared, bring down the exponents we already have. Cancel the common bases. So this one is 3x minus 3 equals 4x minus 6 when we distribute. Um, solving, we subtract, we can move the 3x over. I'm also going to move the 6 over. So we get 3 equals x. Now remember, we're doing different types of problems now, so we have to remember that this is a system. We have y's to find also. It's a two-part question. So I'm going to plug in the 3. I'll just use the first equation. So 8 to the 3 minus 1, x minus 1, is 8 squared which is 64. So the point is 3, 64, because we usually write these as ordered pairs. Um, the next one says algebraically determine the zeros of the exponential function. So we're trying to find the x-intercepts. Um, and when we have an x-intercept, right, it is a point that lies on the x-axis, so the y value is 0, which means I can plug in 0 for f of x. So here is our resulting equation. Now, we haven't had one like this where we have something, you know, with the exponential piece. This is just like any other equation we solve. If we have addition or subtraction, we're going to move that first. So I'm going to move the 32 to the other side. Now that we have the 32 on the other side, we can notice that 2 and 32 are both powers of 2. So we can rewrite 32 as 2 to the fifth. The other side is still 2 to the 2x minus 9. From there, I can cancel the common bases, and we have 5 equals 2x minus 9. Add the 9 over, so we get 14 equals 2x, so x equals 7. Um, next one is just like a little word problem. It says 100 raised to what power? So we'll say 100 to the x equals 1 million cubed. On this one, 100 and 1 million are most easily powers of 10. So 100, if we just count the zeros, is 10 squared. So we're going to write 10 squared to the x and 1 million has six zeros, so that's 10 to the sixth, and we'll just write the cubed next to it. So cancel common bases, we get 2x equals 18, so x equals 9. Exercise 6 is um, another system having to do with graphing. So it says, at what x-coordinate will the value well, the graph of y equals 25 to the x minus a intersect the graph of y equals 1 over 20, 125 to the 3x plus 1. So we have an a in here too, which is going to make this one a little bit more complicated. Um, but I know if I want to find where they intersect, um, I just need to set them equal to each other system. So this is 25 to the x minus a equals 1 over 125 to the 3x plus 1. Um, 25 and 1 over 125 have a common base of 5. So we'll have 5 squared to the x minus a. 1 over 125 is a fraction. It shows division, so we need a negative exponent. So we have 5 to the negative 3, 3x plus 1. So now we're ready to cancel common bases. Um, I have 2x minus 2a equals negative 9x minus 3. 
Um, kind of weird with the A. We're trying to solve for X. It says, what is the X coordinate? We also see our multiple choice answers are solved for X. So we're going to get X by itself. I'm going to move over 9X and get 11X and add over 2A. And I'm going to get negative 3 plus 2A when I move the 2A over and divide by 11 to solve for X. So I'm pretty sure yeah, these two terms are switched in my answer, 2A minus 3 over 11. And our last one um, is also related to graphing. It says the exponential function y equals 1 over 25 to the x minus 2 over 5 minus 10 is shown graphed along with the horizontal line y equals 115. So this is just to kind of connect this y equals 115. And this one is y equals 1 over 25 to the x minus 2 over 5 minus 10. And we are trying to find this intersection point. Now, since the point lies on the line one fit y equals 115, we know the y has to be 115, and we're trying to find the x value, which is labeled a. So I'm going to set the two equations equal to each other. Um, I can plug in a for x. Basically, we're solving for x. It doesn't matter. So I'm just probably going to leave the x there because it's easier to look at. So we're setting these two equations equal together in the system. We have another one we need to move over the 10 first. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides, which is going to conveniently create common bases. One over 125 is five to the negative two. And we have this exponent as well. And the other side is five cubed. So these cancel. Um, a little bit of difficulty, you know, with the exponents, I'm going to make negative to a fraction. Um, we're going to distribute this in, multiply the numerator, multiply the denominator. So this gives me negative 2x plus 4 over 5. So that's just a little fraction work, nothing crazy. Um, and over here I have 3. So first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 5 to cancel the denominator. And I get negative 2x plus 4 equals 15. Adding 4 over, I get, or subtracting 4, I get 11. Dividing by negative 2, I get x equals negative 5.5 or negative 11 over 2. Um, either way is correct. So I'm just going to change this over to an a, right, because we are trying to find the value of a. Um, and that if I graphed these two, if I actually graphed them on my calculator, this and this, I would see that they intersect at the point negative 5.5, 115.